Welcome into BLTV Channel 6. I'm Brian Kell. We've reached out to many of the candidates throughout our service area that have uh, hotly contested uh, candidates running for them in particular races, and this is one of those candidates we have here with us. Uh, Larry York, who is a candidate for one of the three open positions uh, with the city of McMinnville, uh, their board, Alderman. Uh, six candidates running, three slots. Larry, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. It's good to be here. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about you. Well, I'm a uh, conservative Christian, and um, like I said, I'm a devoted husband. I have uh, five children, uh, eight grandchildren, and um, I'm a uh, local business owner. I've been here for 30 years I'm not with my business, and um, well, I now serve uh, as owner and co-founder of a multi-million dollar worldwide business, and um, as a, you know, at a young age, um, I've just, I was raised to, to go out and hunt and fish, uh, just like any other country boy. I was raised in Kentucky, and um, like I said, you know, at a young age, I was raised to go out and work, and, um, and like I said, and to learn the values of money at a very young age. Yeah. Um, what are people telling you are the most important things they want to see happen in the city of McMinnville? Well, like I said, you know, before in the debate, um, I went out personally and talked to a lot of the people around the community and, uh, and the citizens in the city. And um, one thing that they want to see change is um, on the board. And they feel like, you know, they're not being heard. And well, I guess we're going to see what happens, you know, that on uh, November the 8th. Mm -hmm. um, they just feel like, that, you know, they're not being heard and that the truth is not coming out. And I've heard that more than anything here lately. That seems like that's been probably one of the number one things. But of course, you know, um, naturally the city streets has been one of the biggest topics. You know, city streets has been a big deal, mm -hmm. the, the potholes and all that. Um, but of course, you know, when we talk city streets, you know, McMinnville is 10 square miles. It's not just downtown, and that's the one thing that a lot of people are talking about. You know, um, they feel like they're being left out. If it's not downtown, they feel like they're not being they're being left out. And we, you know, if you can drive around the city and you can see that there's a lot of streets on the outskirts of town, and they're in bad shape. Mm -hmm. And you got city, um, the the city of drainage and flooding that hasn't been taken care of in a long time either. And like I said, when I'm talking to these people, they feel like they're not being heard and um, they feel like just downtown is being taken care of and not the whole 10, 10 square mile uh, of the city limits. Yeah. You, you've brought up a lot of things just now on, on infrastructure, you know, but, but are there any, any specific goals on infrastructures that, that you'd like to see happen over the next four years? Well, I think something that I would like to see, you know, done is, um, the budgeting stuff needs to be neat. I need to be looking at some of all that stuff on it, you know, because I don't know um, where a lot of this stuff is, uh, uh, you know, has been allocated to. Um, I, did, I need to look at it. I don't want to, I don't know what happened, has happened to a lot of the money on it and stuff. That's just something that I need to look at when I get in there. I don't know, gotcha. you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, McMinnville's been fortunate to see growth in tourism. It, it helps grow, you know, revenues, which has been, been key. Do you have any plans to help that front over the next four years, or just your thoughts on tourism for the city of McMinnville? Um, well, in, in the tourism, you know, that is something that, yes, I would. The thing about tourism is that is something that is not ran by the mayor of Alderman. Mm -hmm. That is something that is um, that is appointed. Uh, Sarah Cantrell is over that. Uh, the board of mayor and Alderman appoint um, appoint uh, that board, and they allocate the money on that. They mm -hmm. actually take care of that on their own. The uh, the city taxpayers don't actually um, uh, are not taxed on anything like that. Like they uh, the uh, the tourism bought the ice rink, for example. Right. The taxpayers didn't have to pay anything on that. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, um, I would say yes, I mean, if anything comes up, like if they need our help with the city, uh, tourism is a big deal. Yeah. So I would love to help them if they can. Yes. 
Good deal. Uh, the homeless issue, it's been a topic of, of much debate uh, recently. Are there any thoughts on how that can be tackled uh, in, in a better way for the city of McMinnville's benefit? Well, this is a big topic, you know, and it's been coming up a lot also. Mm -hmm. um, there's been 423 homeless, and out of that, there's been like, like 72 kids out of that that's been serviced, this came through. Um, the problem with this is, you know, you have, you have homeless, and then you have drug abuse, and then out of that you have mental illness. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a tough subject. Uh, my thing is, is we need to go down and look at the homeless program that we have set up here and see what we can do to help them and see what we can do to back them up. But, you know, I don't know what else we can do to help because there's a lot of people down there that don't want help. Um, I think what we need to do is see people like that lives in the cars maybe uh, that are going to work every day, mm -hmm. uh, taking kids to school still, that are trying to get out, to try to get out of being homeless and see if we can do to help somebody like that, for example. Because yeah. there's a lot of people that are homeless or living in tents that don't want help. So I think we just need to make sure, go down to the homeless program uh, facility down here and, and talk to them and see what we can do to help them. But like I said, you know, you have your homeless, your drug abuse, and then you have your mental illness, which comes from the drug abuse and then talk to the, to the homeless program people here and see what we can do to help them. Yeah. Uh, are, are you a no new taxes, no matter what person, or, or does it depend on the situation the city finds themselves in? Can you talk about taxes and kind of where you fall on that, on that spectrum? Well, uh, first of all, I mean, I don't want taxes no more than anybody else does. Right. You know, uh, but what I would have to do is take the situation that comes across the table and look at it and see what's best for the citizens and the city at that time and and to make a decision at that moment. Every situation is gonna be different each time. Mm -hmm. So like I said, I don't want taxes, I don't want anybody else, but there's gonna be times where we have to tax, okay? There's gonna be times, but I don't want taxing no more than anybody else does, mm -hmm. but each situation is going to be different each time. Yeah, um, working with others of different mindsets is an important part of local politics. And do you have examples uh, of working um, with people of different perspectives, or, or, or if not, how would you plan to do this? Well, like I said before, I'm a um, co-owner of a worldwide company, and I sit on a board of directors. Uh, with people, uh, we deal with money, uh, multiple millions of dollars every week. And every one of us have different mindsets. Um, and we uh, work with, like I said, money every day with mo multiple millions. And um, I have another company here uh, in McMinnville. Uh, it's a warehouse that has service that deals uh, with um, the national business of the U.S. and. Um, so I know how to work with a team of people uh, and accomplish set goals that we have on a daily, weekly, monthly, and a yearly basis. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think I do have the skills to do that. Gotcha. Um, preliminary reports have shown uh, the Morford Street phase of downtown McMinnville uh, revitalization would cost a little over $15 million, and this has been quoted too in the paper. I think it was uh, Nolan Ming that said, you know, mostly funded through grants. Are you for pushing forward with this project or not? And whichever way you fall on that, why? Well, um, if it's for grants, with grants, yes. Um, if it's taking the money out of the, the, the uh, general fund, I'm not. Um, one reason is they did a poll with the citizens and the poll uh, that they pulled with the citizens had nothing to do with anything that phase three is with because the citizens are more for the, the city streets, repairs, and that kind of stuff. And phase three is, that's not what phase three is on. So. I would say if they can do it with grants, that's great. But if when it comes to pulling money out of the uh, the general fund, I would say no, I would not be. Good deal. Okay, Larry, we've got a couple to a few minutes here left. Uh, thank you for your time. If you'd like to at this time, maybe talk to the person out there that's watching that that as to why you would be one of the people uh, that they should consider to fill one of those three slots for the city of McMinnville Alderman mm -hmm. board. Uh, first of all, I'm not a politician. Uh, I'm a business owner. Um, I'm a conservative Christian first. Um, I'm a father, devoted husband, and I'm a grandfather. 
And um, like I said, uh, I do run a uh, local, uh, national, and worldwide company. And I've been doing this on a board of directors uh, with multiple people that runs millions of dollars. And we do run set goals all the time. And um, I, I love McMahon Bureau. I've been here for 30 years. And we all live here because we have a quality of life. And we live here because, you know, we love what we, what we have here and we need to protect that. Um, I have five kids that live here in McMinnville and they all work here except for one. And I have eight granddaughters and every one of my kids and my grandkids are all very active here. McMinnville has been very good to me and I want the same for my kids and my grandkids. And I want to work toward um, of making sure that we have a good work environment here and that my kids and my grandkids have the same opportunity that I've had and that every citizen here has the same. Um, I just want to make sure that when our kids and the next generation gets out of high school, they see an opportunity to stay here. They don't want to move off and they have to go off somewhere out of town. When they get out of college, they want to move back home and they feel proud to call McMinnville their home. And, um, you know, I just, um, think that we have a good quality of life here and I just want to work hard to do that. And I want to build what we can to have more, uh, more opportunity to have better work environments here for us. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm Larry York and I'm running for uh, Alderman, City Alderman, and I appreciate your vote. Good deal, Larry. Thank you so much. You. And we thank you for watching here on BLTV Channel 6. I want to remind you that Tuesday, November 8th, will be uh, election coverage here on Channel 6 starting at 7 p.m. Multi-county uh, coverage will begin, like we said, at 7 o'clock on Tuesday, November 8th. Uh, we'll be going and doing live updates from uh, the Warren County Election Commission, so we hope that you will join us then. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you again here on BLTV Channel 6.